Okay, welcome to our second video. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at some of the main factors driving the process of globalization. Uh, because of time limits, I've just chosen two factors. Uh, firstly, the significance of containerization. And secondly, the rise of transnational corporations and also brands from both advanced and emerging countries. So first of all, containerization, a, a really important concept, one that I'm sure you'll have seen visually and think about in terms of your economic geography. Containerization is a system of freight transport for use in sea shipping. And that's not easy to say. And containerization has reduced the cost of moving thousands of different products across the world. Here's a question for you. Maybe you can do a quick bit of research. How many container ships are there at the moment in the world economy? Over 200 countries have ports open to container ships and uh, ports typically measure the volume of containers they handle in what's called 20 foot equivalent units or TUs shown in the um, in the picture here. 2018 containers handled by all ports across the world estimated at more than eight, 780 million 20 foot equivalent units. Millions and millions of containers are handled across the world every week, every year. And in fact, there are just over 5,120 registered container ships in the world. <clears throat> you may well have seen that famous film, Captain Phillips, with the great, the iconic Tom Hanks, uh, a, a riveting story about the impact of piracy on the east coast of Africa. This chart shows the capacity of the world container ship fleet from 1980 through to 2019. And uh, you can see the, the huge growth of, of, of shipping uh, capacity. The last bit of the chart just takes it year by year. The previous uh, increase was a five year segments. Uh, but the world merchant container shipping fleet has a huge capacity. So over 5,000 ships moving products around the world. And to see how this, that, how this industry, this sector will be impacted by the, the global crisis. Quite a few countries have benefited from this. They've latched on to the importance of containerization. I think in the UK, you think about ports such as Felixstowe. There's a much bigger port in Rotterdam in Holland, which handles huge amounts of merchandise, trade and cargo. And Singapore is a great example of, uh, of a city state that has, that has benefited from containerization. Here's the port in Singapore population of just over 5 million people, but they moved nearly nearly 600,000 million 20 foot containers uh, in 20, um, 2017. Huge number. And that is actually more than Italy, France, Russia, Sweden and the UK combined. Sweden is a really good example of what's called a hub economy. It's a trade hub for the world economy uh, and also a country widely praised for their handling of the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent economic fallout. Again, think about how Singapore might well be affected by the sharp decline in world trade in 2020. But containerization is an important aspect of globalization. My second key feature of globalization has been the rise to scale and the rise to prominence of transnational businesses or corporations. TNCs base their manufacturing their assembly, their research, their retail. Uh, they base their operations in across seven different countries, several different countries. Well, we just got time to look at two iconic, iconic examples. Here's a question for you. How many Nike retail stores are there in the world? Now you can do some research if you want, have a quick look at uh, the interweb and see if you can work out how many Nike retail stores are there in the world. If you want to do some research, just pause the video and then press the play button when you're ready to move on. Well, Nike has, according to this data, just over 1,150 retail stores worldwide. Of course, they have an online distribution platform themselves, omni-channel retailing, but Nike is, you can see here, the growth of Nike stores from 2009. And again, think about the, the likely consequences of the, of the world recession in 2020. Will Nike start closing some of their retail stores? worldwide to, to save on cost. So Nike is an iconic uh, transnational brand. Let's think about another one, Starbucks. Here's a question for you. Outside of the USA, 
which country is host to the largest number of Starbucks stores? Is it Canada? Is it the UK and Ireland? Is it China? Is it Japan? Again, you can do your own research on this if you want to. So if, you do, if you'd like to research it, just pause the video and press the play button when you're ready to move on. Well, what do you think the answer is? Well, let's look at the data. Uh, this is the data for Starbucks stores globally in 2019. You can see the United States is way out ahead, both in terms of company, company operated stores and their kind of franchise license store model. So effectively 15,000 stores. China has the highest number outside of the States. Uh, then Japan, Canada, actually 1,500 if you add together the licensed and company operated stores. And there's the data for the UK. And lots of licensed Starbucks stores in countries such as South Korea and Taiwan. Globalization, I think, is really about the scale and the speed of international business. Nike, Starbucks, Juta to You, you know, those kind of iconic businesses. And in many ways, it's exploded in the past few decades to unprecedented levels. But although we tend to think about transnational companies from advanced, rich, high income countries, I think it's also important to be aware of and perhaps develop an interest in the rise of transnational corporations from emerging companies, uh, countries. And there are many. Alibaba, it's huge, one of the world's biggest online retail firms now, bigger than Walmart. Tata Group in India, which owns Jaguar Land Rover, uh, steel making, car making conglomerate. Samsung, of course, hugely important uh, transnational company from South Korea. The likes of Gili Auto, which bought Volvo a few years ago, a Swedish car maker set to become one of the biggest car makers in the world from China. Reliance Industries from India. And what, of course, a business that's been in the news hallway. Uh, technology is one of the, 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 one of the developers of 5G. Um, a business that has raised important political as well as economic considerations in recent times. My strong advice, by the way, is to think of those transnational corporations in emerging countries and maybe do a bit of research this summer on, the, on their rise to prominence. Again, if I ask this question, which brands dominate in 2019, dominate the global smartphone industry? So if I ask you this question, could you name three of the top brands in the world's smartphone market in terms of percentage share of the market? Could you name three? Have a go, do some research if you want. And again, just press the play button when you're ready to move on. Well, here's the data for uh, 2014, second quarter, and fourth quarter of 2019, which is the latest data I could find. And it shows that in 2019, um, uh, Apple led the way with a 19% market share, then Huawei, uh, sorry, then Samsung, then Huawei Technologies, uh, Xiaomi, Oppo. In other words, those were the top five, and a whole range of others, of course, have 30, 31% of the market. But interestingly, Apple is not the dominant brand in the market. There are lots of brands and manufacturers, service providers from across the emerging world. Uh, we strongly suggest that you use some of your, your time in the summer, perhaps, to do some individual research. Hopefully this video might have encouraged you to do that. Perhaps choose two transnational corporations. Choose one from an advanced country. Uh, choose one from an emerging country countries such as India or China or Brazil or Mexico. Find out some interesting facts about the extent to which they operate in many different countries and regions of the world. Maybe research how profitable they are. Uh, have they made some significant acquisitions in their growth story? But find something out about transnational businesses because they really are a key factor driving the process of globalization. In our third and final video in this section, we're going to consider some of the threats to globalization in the world economy now.